All right, so this is a show. I'm not sure what it's called yet. Um, right now, I don't know when the next one's going to be. Probably going to be in like a month or something. I don't even know. Hopefully, eventually, it'll be like a once a week thing or like, a, you know, once every few days thing or maybe even a daily thing where I just get to talk about what's on my mind. But for now, I'm not really sure where it's going to go. So I'm just going to keep it at, you know, I'm not sure when the next episode's going to be. It's just sort of a freestyle type thing. Um, but. I'm going to try to stay away from the origin of this thing, even though I've been thinking of it, thinking of doing it for months. Try to stay away from kind of the origins of this so I can focus on putting out a good episode today. So here's some things I was thinking about today. Um, that might be, that might be the title. Things, things I was thinking about, right? I just, that's kind of what I've always wanted to do with YouTube, right? Like, I, I shouldn't be talking about this, but like, um, you know, like I had that second channel where I, I like talked. It started out as like sort of a Cuban thing, and then it just turned into like, whatever I want to talk about. So hopefully that can be the outlet for me. Where I just get to talk. And I know the audience, you guys don't care, but I'm just going to talk. Um, all right. So I want there's something I want to talk about. And this is a theory I've had going on a few years. So it's called, or I call it the 4th of July theory. And in the 4th of July theory, it's, it only applies to Americans, I guess. But, um, that doesn't really matter. Um, the 4th of July theory, it goes like this. Every kid, even adults who get, like, you know, some kind of summer, they get something on summer off, you know, like, their job love has them work less or whatever, but mostly teenagers, kids, um, college kids, they get the summers off. And it usually, um, like, usually get summer off starting in, like, June or even late May or, you know, sometime around then, college kids even earlier. But by 4th of July, that's, like, the wake-up moment. That's, this is my opinion. Fourth of July is like the wake up moment for students because, you know, you get you get off in, the, in early June, you get to like, you know, it's the summer, but you're like, oh, I still have like 10 weeks left, right? Like, I'll just do whatever, kick back, relax, watch TV all day, sleep all day, you know, do whatever all day. But then all of a sudden, Fourth of July, you're like, oh, Fourth of July, that's like late summer. That's like once it's Fourth of July, you think like, oh, that's when like summer's winding down or not winding down, but like you're, you're in the middle of summer. But before the Fourth of July. You don't think you're in the middle of summer. You still think like, oh, I'm still in this like post school phase, not yet summer. But when Fourth of July hits, this is what I'm telling you guys. This is the theory. Fourth of July is the wake up call of the summer, and I'm telling. I think everyone has experienced this. They just don't talk about it. But Fourth of July, it's like the wake up call. It's like, dude, get your shit together. Oh, is this? I'm swearing on this show, I guess. Get your shit together, right? Like, this is you're in summer now. Fourth of July just happened. So, in honor of today being the fifth of July. I felt like that was a good thing to talk about. Wake up call for everyone to get get their summers together. Um, but also July, I was thinking right now, I was like, I feel like the vibes right now are pretty good. Like just summer vibes. And also like, it's just a better summer than normal. Like everyone was just kind of, you know, chilling. Like everything just seems kind of better than it was, you know, 2023, 2022, 2021. And I came up with another theory. And I was like, wait, this totally checks out. At least for the past, at least for every, you guys will see. I think every election year in the U.S. is a good year. But, like, we think in our minds that it's a bad year because we're like, oh, elections are so divisive and shit. But, like, I've been, you know, sentient. I've been, like, thinking from 2016, 2020, 2024. Every year, 2016, 2020, 2024, great years. Probably best years. Like, best years of my life. 2016, 2020, 2024, that, honestly, I, that's probably in my rankings, something like that, maybe 2023, because I got some world records, right, but, I mean, that's, that's sort of a larger scope type thing, I mean, if you're just thinking about, like, what years I've been, you know, just the most happy, and, like, everything seems new and exciting, 2024 is, like, a really good year, and I was like, how come, how come this is a thing, how come every election year, is a good year and well first of all i think i should mention 2020 2020 real quick a lot of people think of that as a bad year but i think we're starting to see a lot of people are actually nostalgic for 2020 which is kind of funny because like a, during 2020 everyone was like oh this fucking sucks right like we're stuck in our houses this is terrible but now we look back and it's like that was kind of like fun that was like now we look on that with like rose tinted glasses like all nostalgic all nostalgic um so yeah, 2020, election year, and then everyone says, oh, 2020 sucks, we're in the middle of 2020. 2016, everyone's like, oh, 2016 sucks, 
Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, like, this is so terrible. But then you get past 2016, and it's like, you look back on it, and I'm telling you, every, like, every um, Gen Z or, like, every, like, every Gen Z kid will say, like, 2016 and 2020 were the best years of their childhood. I'm telling you right now. Maybe some people will say, like, 2018, but most people, Gen Z, would say 2016 and 2020. So my election, my election theory goes like that. It's like, everyone says it's a bad year, but because everyone during it thinks it's a bad year, that's, we remember it better because it's like, we remember it like, oh, that was like, everything was new during that year. Everything was like fun and like, we didn't know what to expect. So during it, it feels like kind of confusing and you're like, oh, this is terrible. But you look back on it and you're like, wow, we had a lot of like fun times in all that confusion. So 2024, literally I've been thinking like 2024 is a great year. Um, so yeah, that's my election year theory. Um, all right. So now that we've been talking about 2024, the election, this isn't a political show. It might turn into a political show, maybe in like November when politics is happening. But I, okay. If you're American, you'll know what I'm talking about. The past week, ever since the debate, all you hear about is like, oh, Joe Biden is dead. And I'm no fan of Joe, trust me, I'm no fan of Joe Biden. I mean, not to start start a rampage against me, but I'm no fan of Joe Biden. But I, I don't get this, like, everyone's always, like, in the past week, in the past week, since the debate, people are like, we need to get Joe Biden out here. We need to do all this. And, like, every, people start panicking, I'm telling you. If you're not in America, I don't know if you know what this is like. It might be, like, in the UK right now. You know how they just had that, that election and the conservatives lost, like, all their all their seats, whatever, whatever. And like it's like a total change. It might be kind of like that. Like it's just like the shift in like public opinion is crazy. Like the whole country turned on Joe Biden, and it's pretty crazy. I actually I was kind of a fan of Joe Biden, not a fan, but like I didn't totally hate him. Um, then things changed and I started not disliking him. But that happened for me like a while ago, and this happened like this week. It was just overnight after the debate. It was like the polls say like something like he has like a thirty percent approval. Which is like, that's lower than Donald Trump, and Donald Trump is like the least popular president ever. So Joe Biden is like, that's like half of what Donald Trump was, at, or like not half, because he was at, like, Donald Trump was at like forty, and that's when when he was in, in office, it was like wow, Donald Trump is so low. Joe Biden's at thirty, and that's like insane. But okay, I don't see the thing is, I don't really get it. Like, okay, when you hear him talk, he's like, yeah, this guy is dementia. He's like, he seems like he's dying, but it's like. Haven't we been seeing this for a long time? Like, we've seen Joe Biden, like, trail off for, like, four years. And all of a sudden, everyone's panicking. I don't really understand this. Um, It seems like the panic is, like, really just going off the rails. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Like, I don't under... I just can't put my mind in the mind of, like, a Democrat who would be like, wow, we need to replace Joe Biden after this. Like, did they not see that? <laughs> is this the straw that broke the camel of Zach? I mean... It's not like him having dementia is like has changed any of the stuff he's done. Like, shouldn't you be basing your opinion off that and not the fact that you just saw him rumble on a debate stage? But yeah, that's my thing. I don't know why everyone's turning on Joe Biden right now as opposed to just like paying attention to his policies. Um, even like conservative media, which like I'm, I watch more conservative media than um, liberal media. But conservative media now is like they totally like. Before it was like conservative media be like, yeah, Joe Biden's a terrible president. Now all they can talk about is like Joe Biden is losing the polls. He's losing this. And he's losing this. It's like, okay, but shouldn't you be paying attention to his policies, not just like his dementia? Like, I'm not a fan of his policies, so I just wish people would think about his policies and not the fact that he has dementia. But whatever. Um, on the topic of that, we're gonna do a little. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this segment's gonna go over well with you guys. I want to talk about Roger Waters. So, okay. You guys don't know who Roger Waters is? He is a legendary musician. Pink Floyd. Like, I love their albums. Dark Side of the Moon. The Wall. Wish You Were Here. Wish You Were Here. Let me tell you this. You guys know I took AP Macro, AP Micro. I took a bunch of hard classes this year. I'll be taking a bunch of hard classes next year. The song that I would study to, it, or not song, it was the whole album. I would just play Wish You Were Here on repeat until I got my homework done. And that's like what I... The camera fucked up. That's like what I would study to. So like Wish Her, I'm a huge Pink Floyd fan. And the whole while I knew Roger Waters was a terrible person. But man, if you watch, and I'll link this, I might even play it. I'll, I'll play this Roger Waters interview. 
were the people were kidnapped. Yeah, absolutely. Except the Holocaust survivors and babies were kidnapped. I don't. I don't know about that. Why not, oh yeah, I did. I saw one released in the first set of release. There was somebody who was a Holocaust. Why are you not survivor. curious to read about that though? Oh, I did. I did read about I mean, it. I mean, a big thing of reading. There, there, were, reading, there reading. were a number of old people and young people who were released. I don't know, sometime in November. The baby's right? never been released. I beg your pardon. The baby was never released. The baby was kidnapped and never, never been released. Well, you know, peers. You may or may not just be making it up. I know. Making it up. Babe, Piers, all the filthy, disgusting lies that the Israelis told after October the 7th. Like what? About burning babies and women being raped, which were all completely... Actually, women were raped. No, they weren't. Yes, they were. Well, there's no evidence. It's been, well, it's been established by the you United Nations. You can say Nations. anything that you want, but there's no evidence. But actually, there is extensive evidence. There is no sexual evidence. sexual assault and oh. rape. Well, there is. OK, well, all right, now. Also, we know what Hamas Roger, broadcast on Roger, social media. calm down. Roger, Roger, hmm. calm down. Don't sink to his level. All right, I won't. What level? Well, stop shouting. Stop shouting back. Let him interrupt you as much as you OK, all right. Sorry, Piers, what were you saying? It really, it, I mean, I don't get triggered, right? Like... I'm a pretty level-minded person. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. He's he's a fucking terrible person. Like, what can I do about that? But like, usually I wouldn't stop supporting someone. Like, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't stop listening to someone's music, and I still won't because I think they're a terrible person. Like, I wouldn't stop listening to someone's music if I disagree with them or think they're a terrible person or whatever. But like, I think at this point it's not even it's beyond that. I think Roger Waters is a terrible person. It's more like I just like I can't listen to their music in the same way that I used to, so I won't enjoy it as much. It's not even that I won't listen to his music because I think he's a terrible person. Like, I listen to people, like, I listen to people's music who I think they're not great people. Like, whatever, okay? It's music. You listen, what's the phrase? You listen to music, not the, not the musician, right? Or whatever, like, um, the art, not the artist, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? Like, Kanye West or, like, I don't know, Drake. Some people listen to Drake even though he's a pedophile, you know? What? Um, but, like, so you separate the art from the artist, right? Now it's, like, I it's I'm s I can separate the art from the artist in Pink Floyd, but I can't listen to it with the same like enjoyment that I used to. So that's my Roger Waters talk. Um Alright. Next thing I would talk about is okay, we're gonna do a complete one eighty here because we've been talking about politics and other things. Not entirely politics, we've been talking about a lot of things today, but nowhere near sports. But we're gonna start talking about sports because I talked about earlier Fourth of July weekend. Fourth of July weekend, if you're not in the US, it's always a fun time. Like Fourth of July, you got like tons of sports usually and all this stuff, but um, they're not. You don't usually have tons of sports, but you got like a lot of fun things happen, a lot of anticipation, right? Baseball's fun, you know. You got usually some some kind of soccer going on, but this this year is like really fun because the Copa America, which is a big soccer tournament, it's in the U.S. Um, you know, baseball for some reason is like pretty like it's like ramping up right now. It's like really popular, more popular than usual. Um. But, like, okay, for the July weekend, anyways, the thing I want to talk about is, uh, well, you, you also have the Euros, right? A lot of people are watching that. Um, but on the topic of soccer, the U.S. soccer team. So, I know probably 99% of people watching this couldn't give two craps about the U.S. soccer team. But, I do. And, I was, I, if you didn't know, they totally crashed out. There's these things in, like, soccer where you have, you have to make it out of a group. So, you play every team in your group in order to make it into a higher tournament. Um, the U.S., they were supposed to, like, make it to the semifinals, or maybe even, like, the finals or the quarterfinals, something around there. The U.S. didn't make it out of the group. Not only that, they, like, played terribly. And I think the U.S., it's, like, a lot of people are saying you need to fire the coach, right? Because, like, oh, it's the coach's problem. But I think the problem with the U.S. is that we just, like, we don't like soccer. We, we like, we're just shit at soccer. Like, it's not even the coach's fault. It's not even the players' fault. They're just not good players. Like, it's not their fault they suck. It's just they suck. And there's nothing we can do about that. And <laughs> it's funny because I'm I'm a Detroit sports fan. I've been watching Detroit sports my entire life. We'll be talking a little about that later, actually. But, I, okay, I'm a Detroit sports fan. So if you don't know the Detroit sports, there's actually, like, a YouTube video with, like, a million views that talks about from the period of 2012 to 2022 is the worst decade in the in a, um, in a, like, what do you call it? In a city's history, like, in a city's sports history. And the, the team that they focused on is Detroit. So they had, Detroit had the worst 
decade of any city in sports history, which is like pretty insane. Like, I don't know how to relate this to like all my viewers, but it'd be like, it'd be like if you lived in a country that was just like, they were in like a great depression, right? Like, it'd, it'd be like for living in the great depression, like you just never catch a break. Your sports teams just always suck. Everything sucks, right? So I was, <laughs> so Detroit sports, right? We just like totally sucked. For the past 10 years ever since i've been watching sports we've just sucked right and i think it's like very comparable to us soccer it's like it's beyond recuperation we're just destined to suck no matter how much like we say we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this we just suck and you know that's a lesson in life sometimes you know sometimes you're just destined to suck there's not a lot of, not a lot you can do about it right you gotta you gotta shift gears you know us we're good at basketball we're good at football. We're good at bat, uh, we're good at baseball. We're kind of good at hockey, but you know, sometimes, you know, you're just destined to suck. And so the last thing I want to talk about today, I think this is going to be a recurring segment where one of the things I talk about is just a story from some time in my life. So I was thinking we were talking about sports. So I want to tell a story about the greatest and worst day of my life. So, it was February 2024. Um, was it February? No, it was January 2024. And I was so lucky. I got to go to the Lions, which, okay, so I was talking about a trade sports. This camera is freaking annoying. I was, you know, I was talking about a trade sports, how it sucks so much. The Detroit Lions made the NFC Championship for the first time since, like, the 60s or the 70s or some shit. Actually, I think it was the 90s, but, like, they hadn't been good. They hadn't even won a playoff game in like 30 years or something but we finally made it and detroit was like oh my god it was insane like because we had to win two games before this one so like the just the anticipation for this game was insane and this game was in san francisco it wasn't in detroit so i went to san francisco i was at the game okay first half i'm if you guys haven't seen this game don't even watch it because i'm gonna tell you right now and like honestly i haven't even watched it since since I was with the game, that's how insane it was. But let me just get into the story. So, okay, I get there. This this stadium is insane. It's called Levi Stadium. It's like eighty thousand. It was entirely full, right? The parking lot is like insane. We get there though. We get there into the stadium. It's like ninety five percent San Francisco fans, five percent Lions fans. But the Lions fans are so loud. Like as soon as the game starts, the Lions they actually start like winning. It's like I know everyone was so surprised. All Lions fans are so surprised. The Lions start winning, and the Lions fans sound like they're the entire stadium. It was insane. Like, we were just, like, we took over that stadium. And the San Francisco fans, they had nothing to cheer for. Like, they were just getting absolutely smashed for the first half. And the first half comes to an end, and the Lions are up, like, 20 points. And, okay, so to frame the rest of this story in a correct way, I need to give you guys a little history of the Lions. So, for the last 10 years, I told you guys they sucked, right? But... It's not just that they sucked. It's that every time they've had, they've gotten close to a like chance of sh proving to us, proving to Detroit that they're somewhat good at all, like coming close to winning an important game or coming close to winning a playoff game, or even coming close to making the playoffs. They always just blow it at the last second. They always, you always think they're going to win. That's why, that's why there's something called, well, we'll get into that later, but they, they always blow it at the last second. And so Detroit Lions have this saying, or Lions fans have this saying, same old Lions, right? So if, as soon as you think they're going to win, it's always the same old Lions. You think they're the, the new Lions. Every year, the newspapers, the Detroit Free Press says, it's the new Lions team. The Lions are back. The Lions are in, you know, it's the new Lions team. But, you know, the saying that everyone says when they read those articles or when they watch that first game the Lions win, they always say, same old Lions. Don't get your hopes up because you'll just be brought back to the ground. But let's bring us back to the second half of this game. It's halftime. Um... Journey is playing at Levi Stadium. If you guys don't know Journey, living on a prayer, right? That song, that's Journey. So they're they're playing that song. They play that part where they're like South Detroit, and you know all the Detroit fans are like, yeah, fuck yeah, Detroit. We're like all guys. The hope in the stadium, the hope of Detroit's fans was insane. We were just like, I literally, I told my uncle, he was sitting next to me. I was like, I think we could, we're gonna win, and that's the moment. 
that's the moment the Lions lost. As soon as you think they're going to have hope, as soon as you think, oh, we're going to win, we're going to win, we're going to make the Super Bowl, I'm witnessing fucking history. That's the feeling I had. I was like, we're witnessing fucking history. I was like, holy shit, holy shit. I'm witnessing history. You know, my grandfather didn't get, never got to see this. My dad never got to see this. My kids won't get to see this, you know. This is insanely lucky that I'm here to see the Lions qualify for a Super Bowl. I was like, oh my God, that's the feeling. It was like, my heart was like, oh, I was like, I was like, I'll never be like higher than this. It was like, that's like what heroin is doing. It's like, I'll never have this feeling again. I was like, wow, the Lions are going to make the fucking Super Bowl, right? And then, predictably, Lions get out in the second half and they look like the worst football team in the entire history of football. They just like can't catch a pass. They can't do this. They can't do that. And actually, really quickly, shit falls apart. Like within, I don't remember exactly, but it seemed like really quickly within the second half, it was just like, yeah, we're not going to win this. And it was just like a terrible feeling. And I forgot to mention this, but for the first half, my cousins, they're San Francisco fans, and they were like crying the first half. They were literally on the floor sobbing. They thought like their life, they're smaller kids, obviously, they thought their life was over. And then the second half, it happens, you know, the Lions are just getting absolutely dominated. And my cousins walk up to me. They've been crying the entire time. They walk up to me. They're like, ha ha. They're all in my face. And I was like, you guys were just crying maybe 30 minutes ago. You cannot be getting in my face about this. But, you know, by the end, I was on the verge of tears. I don't think I cried, but man, was it sad. And, you know, I walked out of that stadium surrounded by 49ers fans just feeling like the same old lions were back and i got on the airplane actually i left my entire family or some people in my family were there i need this is something i need to fix for next time my entire family or some some of my family was there and um but i took the plane back before any of them so they dropped me off at the airport because like i had to get back from school but they were they could stay in san francisco for however long they wanted um so <laughs> My cousins live there, so they could just stay with my cousins for however long they wanted. Um, I had to get back like by like five a.m. or whatever to get to school. I don't think I slept that night at all. Um, and I walk in the airport, and all you see are lines fans. The airport, the only flight flights back are just flights from San Francisco to Detroit. It's like, just it's the most depressing place. You think an airport at you know an airport at one a.m. is depressing? This was something beyond depressing then. Like, this was, oh my god. The Lions fans, I'm, okay, I'm 15 years old. These Lions fans are, like, the average age is probably, like, 50, right? Um, but, you know, the biggest Lions fans are about 50 because they're about that age where they can remember just about when the Lions were good in the 90s, but, you know, they're not. Like, the younger fans have just totally given up, so they're, like, they bought the age where they can, like, they just have that glimmer of hope, that glimmer of re remembrance, those that, those memories of when they weren't the same old Lions, but, you know, now they're the same old Lions. But, man just a bunch of 50 year olds drinking like the bars were totally full like just drinking you know we get on the plane and on the plane there we had been like singing like lion songs and shit like the pilot was like playing the fight song over the the intercom on the way back it was just like just everyone looking now just thinking like scrolling twitter just sadly scrolling twitter like oh my god it was it was really depressing like i can't I, that night haunts me still I, like I can't think about the Lions without thinking that night. Can't think about like I just I didn't I didn't even watch the Super Bowl. I've been watching the Super Bowl every year of my entire life. I didn't even watch the Super Bowl this year because I was like we should have been there. We should have been there. We would have beat Taylor Swift, you know the, the the Taylor Swift Chiefs. Um, but yeah, I guess that's my NFC Championship story. Maybe we'll be back. Nope, that's me by drinking the Kool Aid. It's me drinking the Kool-Aid. I can't think that we're going to get back to the NFC Championship. Probably, probably if I had to give my Lions prediction right now, I'm just getting really off the rails right now, but if I had to give my Lions prediction, I'd say like 10 and 7. Man, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't think we can recreate that season. But, whatever. I don't know if I'm going to upload this shit, but this is my first time ever trying to record this episode, so I don't know if I'll upload it, but I like this. I think we're going to do this a bunch more times. Um, Yeah. Thank you for watching. This is, this was the, it doesn't have an name yet show.